everyone. A very warm welcome to you. My name is Holly Stearns. It's lovely to have your company. Well, cancer research is continually developing and the most recent innovations have the potential to revolutionise cancer detection and treatment too. Now, research requires a constant flow of dedication. It's never-ending. Over the last two decades, cancer research has advanced significantly, but there's always more that can be done. Now, technological and pharmaceutical innovations impact research as much as clinical trials do. Cancer is not a one-size-fits-all approach. We know that. But numerous innovations in cancer research research are providing much needed hope by combining detection and treatment advancements. So what are they and where is research heading? Well, let's bring in visionary venture philanthropist and change agent Lance Kawaguchi, the CEO of Cure Brain Cancer Foundation. We're also joined today by Dr. Matthias Holdhoff, medical oncologist in the Brain Cancer Program at Johns Hopkins, plus Dr. Chayton Bettergauder, neurosurgeon affiliated with Johns Hopkins Hospital, as well as Veterans Affairs Mary Land, welcome to you all. Thank you so much for your time today. A really important discussion. Let's get stuck straight into it. Lance, you have access to a global network of the best researchers. Why is the way we look at cancer research so critical? Because as I mentioned before, cancer is not a one size fits all approach. Correct. So Holly, from my perspective, I've pretty much have been on a mission the last two years to really try to support collaborations globally and really try to invest as much as possible in early stage uh, biotechs, but also on the, the newest innovations like liquid biopsies, like some of the immunotherapies, because I feel that the more we can do, the more we can have on the back end to help translate to from the bench to the bedside. So that's why I'm so excited. I'm here in Hong Kong right now. I gave the keynote speech for the first time in three years, the Hong Kong Bio Conference specifically was in person. And as you know, two weeks ago, I, I had the privilege of ringing the bell at NASDAQ in New York City. But every single time I'm there, I'm always talking about the investment in early stage and in researchers to help that translation. Incredible. Dr. Holdhoff, what are the recent innovations in cancer research that have and are changing the way that cancer is approached? Well, that's a great question. And uh, Holly, as you said, um, cancer is not a one size fits all. So I think I would start with um, our better understanding of the biology of cancer. Um, I did my thesis starting about 20 years ago, fellowship starting 15 years ago, been in the field for about 20 years. So much has changed. Um, there's so many uh, more opportunities to um, work together, to collaborate. Um, there are um, new treatments that were not available when I was a fellow that just started evolving. Um, talking of, as an example, immunotherapy, talking about targeted therapy uh, for cancer. It's not one size fits all. We are pursuing uh, individualized uh, treatment for patients with cancer. We are now thinking more of um, disease or pathway-based approaches to cancer, um, both um, um, Dr. Bettegauda, who's here, and, and I, and many of our colleagues working in the field of brain cancer, where uh, we still have uh, ways to go. And um, we are learning um, continuously from um, experts in other fields. So there's a lot of, for lack of better terms, cross-contamination going on. Yes. And uh, we have better ways to do our work. Dr. Bettegauda, on that, are these kinds of modern innovations utilized enough in your eyes? Great question. It's a uh, constant challenge to bring new technologies into clinical practice. One of the biggest challenges is to be able to have enough data and information to allow these technologies and therapies to be used daily. In order to have the evidence and data to bring these to patients, we need clinical trials. And one of the challenges here in the United States and worldwide is the very low percentage of individuals who have aggressive cancers participating in clinical trials. While there are opportunities, I think we as an oncology community need to do better with outreach, having these trials available locally and diffusely so that we can allow these novel technologies to be tested rigorously and comprehensively and allow them to reach far more people than they do today. Yeah, powerful words. Lance, on that, how are you helping to make that happen, make this more available to more people around the world? 
Well, as I spoke to uh, Dr. Hodoff in uh, Tampa, my focus is really to drive venture philanthropy to really support and raise as much funding globally, since cancer is a global problem, to really support innovative therapies like immunotherapies, like um, CAR T's, and different platform technologies. So for me, all I'm trying to use is my finance background to really try to support and raise as much funding for people who really typically are unfundable or the valley of death phase zero to one, where most people would shy away from, I'm trying to encourage investors and family offices to jump on board and let's try to make a difference. And why wouldn't you want to take a risk on something that potentially could save your life or someone you love? Dr. Holdhoff, do you believe that there is any resistance to these kind of modern innovations? Well, that's a, that's a great point. I think everybody in the field of cancer who works there professionally and all patients are excited about innovation, excited about um, going to the boundaries and exploring um, new therapies. There is certainly also concern that new, new therapies, especially if these are really new concepts, really new trials could potentially be harmful and toxic. There are standard of care for most cancers that is established um, and um, um, patients and um, health organizations might feel more comfortable pursuing those. In some cancers, and again, we work on the field of brain cancer, and um, as an example, glioblastoma is one of the tumors that we treat um, um, quite commonly or most commonly. There is um, still a great deal of nihilism um, these are brain cancers, they're hard to treat. Why would we go there? Why would we invest? Why would we go there? And I think um, um, organizations and people like like um, Lance's uh, foundation really uh, build the bridge and invest in new concepts that are critically important. Dr. Bettergauder, what are your thoughts on that, on resistance in regards to modern innovation? And I guess, what are the roadblocks in regards to cancer research at the moment? One of the big hurdles to cancer research at the moment indeed is access to funding that allows this technology to traverse this valley of death that Lance alluded to. Brilliant ideas coming from numerous investigators around the world happen on a very regular basis. Unfortunately, the vast, vast majority never see daylight with regards to being tested in humans. And so the important work that Lance, his foundation and others are doing to bring funding, to bring support, awareness, and advocacy, I think are huge initiatives that need to be enhanced in order to allow these technologies to go from just a concept, just an idea, into a reality that helps human beings with cancer. And you know, one thing that Lance has often spoke about with me is that cancer patients, one thing that they don't have is time, you know, and we need to create this urgency. And I know, Lance, you're really big about that and your work at Cure Brain Cancer Foundation is creating that urgency and it needs to be a global fight here. How are you helping to bridge the gap? Because it's all good and well to say, you know, we need funding and we need to do this and we need to do that and have these conversations. But what's the action that we need now? Well, from our perspective is we establish a U.S. presence. We're going to be establishing a Middle East presence because, again, we want to make sure we have funding vehicles for the best science in the U.S., in the Middle East, and also in Asia Pacific through Australia. But to um, Dr. Hodoff's point, the problem with brain cancer specifically is the volume of patients. Most big pharma will focus on kind of the bigger ticket cancers, higher volume. But per capita or per individual, brain cancer is one of the most expensive all-in costs. So from my perspective, is really trying to get people on board with the vision is that let's focus on these really deadly cancers, GBM, DIPG, rare cancers that most people don't invest in because it's not, it cannot just be about economic return. But I spoke here in Hong Kong, when I spoke at Sidra Medical um, in Qatar, and also at NASDAQ is that we need to have a different lens when we look at investments for venture capital. It cannot just be binary where we're looking at return on investments. It needs to be a blend of return on investment, but also social impact. Similar to what ESG has for big Fortune 500s is because family offices and also private wealth, I find they're much more in tune to purpose. You know, venture capital, they're focused on return. Family offices, they're many generations and they're focused on social impact. And that's what I'm trying to bring together is that if we can figure it out. Look what, I mean, when I lived in the Middle East, I, I learned cancer has been around, documented for about 5,000 years. But what we learned through COVID is that within 18 months, we've got multiple 
vaccines for a novel virus we've never seen before because we have proper funding and a global coordination. Dr. Holdhoff, what are your thoughts on that? Where do you see the innovations in regards to cancer research? Where do you see that pushing ahead into, I guess, the 12 months ahead? I mean, cancer's been around for so many years. Where will we really be pushing to in the future? We get up in the morning, we think about um, there is a real urgency, there's a real um, need to make advances quickly. On the other side, we need to systematically explore what new innovations, what new therapies can do. We want to know that new drugs actually deliver on what they promise. Can they get into the, uh, can certain drugs get into the brain? Can they deliver what we um, want to achieve? And um, do certain concepts such as immunotherapy work in cancer in the brain, or do they not work? So far, there have been some disappointments and setbacks. However, um, we are trying to overcome those, those roadblocks. I think collaboration and collaboration beyond our own institutions, collaborations and entrepreneurship from the outside and a vision that will bring us together and create a similar urgency and collaboration as we saw with COVID would likely catalyze our efforts. Dr. Bettergatter, your final words on this matter for our viewers today uh, about that vision. Yes, thank you for that wonderful question. I think one of the most exciting technologies and areas in cancer research that we hope to see great progress in the next 12, 24 near term is in this space of liquid biopsies. And that is understanding what's happening with the cancer without having to actually do a biopsy, a surgery to remove it. This involves testing of fluids such as the blood or in the brain, cerebrospinal fluid, and one of the well-known ways to reduce cancer mortality, indeed, is early detection. We know things like pap smears for cervical cancer, mammography for, for breast cancer, has shown over many years to save lives. Mm. And we know that we have treatments for these cancers when detected early. It does not require new treatments. Often what we have today is sufficient to cure these individuals. And okay. myself and Dr. Holdoff and teams around the globe have been working for well over a decade to develop these liquid biopsy technologies to help diagnose cancers at their early